Hey everybody, welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be talking about how to configure an SD-WAN on a FortiGate firewall on the 7.0 firmware. Alright, so the first thing that we're going to do when we get in here is we're going to go to the menu and we're going to go to network interfaces. And one of the cool things that uh, Fortinet is doing is they automatically change the SD-WAN zone. If you remember back in older versions of Fort OS, this interface was actually named SD-WAN. Um, and they opted in the 7.0 firmware to go with SASE. So for those of you who aren't familiar with that, that is what Fortinet is branding as a secure access service edge. Um, so that's going to be the interface that we're going to be working with today. And we're going to be putting WAN 1 and WAN 2 into that SD-WAN interface. All right, so we're going to go over here to the SD-WAN menu. And we are going to create a new member. So it's important to note that you cannot add an interface here if it is already being referenced. So if you look at WAN 1 over here it has one reference so because it's being referenced we are not going to be able to add it into the SD-WAN so we're going to add a new member and we're going to do WAN 2 and we're going to put it in the SASE interface and the interface is going to be DHCP so I'm going to see how this looks after I plug it into the WAN or into the actual ISP right now this is sitting up in my studio and I'm configuring it from port 1 um, so we're going to just leave it at 0.0, .0 for right now. And then we're going to go to our policy and objects. We're going to change our WAN. Our WAN policy from going to WAN 1 to going to the SD-WAN interface. And then we're going to go back to network SD-WAN. And I should be able to create a member with WAN 1 on the SASE which is also going to have a DHCP WAN, so I'm not, uh, it should pull the gateway, hopefully, after we get this configured. All right, so now we have two interfaces, WAN 1 and WAN 2, and we're going to use this. Then we can create our SD-WAN rules. So these aren't separate menu items in the 7.0 firmware, it appears. Keep in mind as you're going through this, this is me kind of going flying into 7.0. I haven't really messed with 7.0 yet, so we're going to learn this stuff together. Uh, so in previous iterations, the SD-WAN menus were over here. So now they opted to put them at the top. So this is where you're creating the WAN zones, and then we're going to create the WAN rules and performance SLAs. That's the fun part. All right, so let's enable WAN access to manage the firewall. Now I'll take it downstairs to my ISP connection and I will get it plugged into the internet. All right, so I went downstairs and I hooked up um, port three of my ONT into WAN one of the firewall. And I put my network equipment on my middle shelf because I have kids and the Xboxes and video games controllers are all gonna get thrown on the top shelf. So I'm gonna put my network equipment on the middle shelf and I'm gonna put my um, servers and stuff on the bottom shelf. And then over here, when uh, we got the WAN interfaces connected, I actually hooked up my uh, Comcast ISP too. So we're going to go into WAN 1, and we're going to set the alias to the internet provider. And we're going to set our estimated bandwidth. So this is a gigabit connection. I don't know why this is measured in kilobits, but whatever. Uh, so the cool thing was is that because they were set to DHCP, they automatically picked up their IP, their gateway, etc. Um, so we have this enabled, so we're going to hit OK. Yes, I know, I'm currently connected to this interface. And then on WAN 2, this is going to be Comcast, and let's say they're 200. And these are going to be measurements that are used in the security fabric. So it picked up, it's not the, the modem for this is not bridged. So it's picking up a private IP. So this is going to be our secondary route out. Um, it's going to double NAT. And uh, we're going to hit OK. So now that we've got that configured, 
Both of those are in our SASE interface. I did have to set the static route before I was able to actually connect to this thing from outside. And then that is what this setting is. So the, the actual option for the gateway, the GUI, it's a little bit buggy, um, but when you turn it onto the SD-WAN, it actually doesn't require the gateway. And then inside the SD-WAN, both of these interfaces picked up their gateway via DHCP. So if you notice, you're seeing a lot of stats here. So we can turn on byte set, receive, status. All right, so all of these are enabled right now. We can go into our SD-WAN rules. So if you notice here, the GUI is a little bit glitchy, but if we give this a maximum weight of 255, it should get 100% of the traffic. Unless that fails. So this is our implicit rule. And then we can go in here and we can create our performance SLAs. So a good one that a lot of people use is to ping Google. Let's see if that's in here. Default DNS. Okay, that's a good one. Uh, Gmail, google.com. All right, so this is going to be an HTTP check. You can also do DNS checks. All SD-WAN members, participants, SLA targets. So you don't want more than 250 millisecond latency or 50 millisecond jitter or 5% packet loss. It's going to check every one second, five failures before it inactivates that link. So now we can see these health checks over here. And we can see both of them side by side. So there's a little bit more latency and jitter. Nothing too major, no packet loss. And now let's set up a ping check to Google DNS. 8.8.8.8. Eight dot eight dot four dot four. SLA targets will do five hundred fifty five percent packet loss. We're going to check it every one second and we will update the static routes. All right, so now we have three triggers that will fail over. So if DNS fails, it will fail the link over. If HTTP to google.com fails, it will fail over. If pings to the DNS servers fail, it will fail over. Um, and it's set to automatically update the static route. So based on the routes in here, it will switch over as needed. So we got very low traffic here. I don't really have anything behind this firewall to generate traffic right now, so we can come back to this later on after we build the LAN out a little bit. Uh, but for now, this is a basic SD-WAN configuration if you want to set one as the primary, um, and then if you want to set specific applications or whatever. So anything that's sanctioned, um, let's say that you're going to your Microsoft shop, so you're going to use Office 365. So we can say all traffic to Microsoft Office 365, Microsoft Azure, or the other miscellaneous Microsoft services, Microsoft Updates, So we want the strategy for that to be the best quality. Um, and if we have costs, you can calculate in your WAN costs. So like let's say that you're paying you know, $300 a month for your gigabit link, um, or, and you have to pay for overages, or if Comcast has you pay for overages, you can put costs on these interfaces and you can optimize how your traffic flows through the WAN to minimize your monthly bill. Um, these are these links are free for me. So um, I'm just going to say that the preference is our fiber network. And 
we are going to measure the SLA of Google DNS before it fails over the link. All right, so let's just say optimize Microsoft services. And apparently I can't create spaces in here anymore. There we go. Optis optimize Microsoft services. And there is our SD-WAN rule. And these are our performance SLAs that we can use to create rules off of. And it will switch between the interfaces in these zones. Now, another side note that I probably should mention is we enabled management on the WAN interfaces, which means they're accessible via the public internet. So what we need to do is go into our administrators. So we're gonna go into system, administrators, and we are going to set up trusted hosts. And that's what we're going to do for now. Um, eventually, we're going to turn management off of the WAN, but until we build our LAN interfaces and set up some networks internally, management tunnels, VPN, uh, we want to set up trusted hosts to keep our firewall from getting broken into while we have management enabled on the WAN ports. And that is your basic SD-WAN configuration with two internet links and how you can set up rules to optimize your business flow based on performance SLAs that you set. If you made it to the end of the video, I appreciate you. Go ahead and hit that thumbs up, click subscribe, and turn on notifications because I'm gonna be building out an entire enterprise network and you don't wanna miss it. Catch you on the next video.